What's going on, everybody? This is Joshua Bishop, and you're listening to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name. Taking your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, even in the year 2019. This is Wrestling Chairs. We like to talk about things going on in Northeast Ohio independent wrestling scene. We preview shows, we review shows, and sometimes we even have interviews along the way. This is a review episode of AIW's Little Guido's Beer Bash. I am your host. I am Justin Summers. Before we get into any more of the show, let's go over a little bit of details you need to know. Please uh, subscribe to us on Wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook.com slash WrestlingCheers, Twitter.com slash WrestlingCheers, and Instagram.com slash WrestlingCheers. Email, if you so choose a desire, WrestlingCheers at gmail.com, and we have the merch store over at WhatAManeuver.net. And WrestlingCheers is also brought to you by the Trending Topics Network, Midwest Territory, and Key on Sports. Like I said, I'm your host, Justin Summers, and tonight we have Stacy. Hey, man. How's it going? It's going good. This is, what, your third week on? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's three in a row. It's a record. That is. It, what, it was supposed to be Caden who told me he was full-time, but hey, now I, now I guess it's you. Yeah, I'm like the uh, I'm the third stringer on this one. I'm the, the third replacement. He was replacing <laughs> Pam, so. And we have Pat. Hey, everybody. I'm back. This isn't Pod Van Dam, and you're here. Nope. I was on Pad, Pod Van Dam this week, though. I wasn't a big fan of my audio. Do you, can you hear me? Do I sound good? Do you, you sound just fine, and it'll just be just as good after I edit. Awesome. We get a, I didn't like my audio this week. We're going to record live pretty much every week now, especially after this week. Live audio always just sounds so much better. Yeah. yeah I just talk about it but listen to it anyways it was a good episode <laughs> thanks yep. for having me on though we tailored our recording schedule just just for you yeah i'm a busy boy on tuesdays oh, yeah. so i'm sorry i gotta gotta get that money you know got a little baby coming and i i i, I understand i want i want people to feel like they're welcome on the show i don't want to be like oh it's only tuesday so you can't come on but i can easily do mondays just like this week so yeah hey and to be fair all the people that are on the show all the time, the roster of characters, mm-hmm. um, not, not not a lot of them were at the show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was the other big thing because it was like uh, Thirst Store Chopper, not there. Young Ed, not there. Um, Rick. Rick, not there. And it was like, okay, shit, I only have a few people who could talk about this show. It was pretty much us three, Caden, and Pam. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh what about uh what about Dustin? I mean he was there. Have you just has that been addressed? I've never af- like, I've never like officially training? can he be on still or what you know what I mean? Like has that been even brought up? Am I because I mean, a dick dick here? <laughs> I mean because he's training, I don't wanna like I don't know if I if he jeopardized bringing him on or anything, but Right, right. Okay, so I was just gonna say, because he was there. I know Dustin oh, yeah. was there. But I don't think he can really be on much anymore, as I guess. Just backing him up, you know. He was oh, yeah. there. He, he was made there. it. He can't really be there. So. Well, it's like <laughs> him and also uh, old Ed. Like with Ed, he's always taking pictures, and he, he said he's only good for previews. Yeah. Yeah, he's a little busy during the show. Yeah. So we're still down to us five. And Caden never got back to me. Pam was originally supposed to be on, but there's reasons why she can't be here. I mean, it's perfectly understandable, so we get... Stacy now as the as he said the third string so yeah that's where <laughs> way Stacy's good you listen to this guy's podcast man he's fucking good of course I do thanks man hell yeah it's a classic pipes I need that shit 
this guy. That's a voice. That's a voice for audio, man. People say you got face for audio and shit. It's like a disc. You got voice for audio. What? Why do you think I wanted him to be on the podcast in the first place? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, just giving him the rub, brother. <laughs> Of course, I love Pod Van Dam and Super Fantastic. I plug both shows at the end of the show. I feel like we're like a trio. You know, we're like a, a trifecta of good, good, good listening. <laughs> and then we can get Ed on here. Then we can get Ed on here and it'd be like a two-hour, three-hour episode. <laughs> I was texting him. I'm like, if if Caden doesn't show up and if Stacy doesn't show up, man, you might need to jump in here. We could just <laughs> pretend like you were there. <laughs> I thought of a funny thing today. It was like, what if I got, like, for example, for this show, I would have got on Ed and Rick for the review, two people who weren't there. Right. And I just read the results and said what happened, and they had to give me their thoughts on it. Well, Caden's been doing the, you know, the gifting. So technically, they could have seen, you know, some of the, ma- you know, they could get a vibe yeah. for it, per se. Um, but was, totally be in the dark. Has he gifted this show yet? Um. Wasn't he doing live stuff that night? I think he does like some live stuff. Like he puts out a little some videos here and there, like night up. Oh yeah, he puts the puts the videos out. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, they could have seen some of that shit, you know. That's that's very and true. Smart Mark, I think the rough edit is up or no, maybe not. I don't know. He'll have the shot to do it with Jayla with it being on Fight TV. He could go home that like after every night and or both yeah. of them, I should say, and, and gif him up. He yep. and he would do that. Yeah, that's definitely something I could see Caden doing. I like the Jaylets on Fight TV this year. Yeah. I I wish everyone was on Fight TV. In between Fight TV or being live on independentwrestling.tv. Like, give me one of the other, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I like the fight because then I could buy it afterwards and have them digitally to watch whenever. Yeah. Yeah, and some of them, if, if you buy, like, I know a lot of the stuff, the Janela ones that I bought and stuff, you just, you have it. You have infinite replays when you buy it the first time. Yeah. My only issue with stuff on Fight TV or what I've ran into, like, with uh, Joey Janela's Lost in New York, when I bought that, I watched halfway through, and then I, I went to go back, and it didn't have a bookmark. That kind of annoyed me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think the, I don't think the app does that. If you go off it, it just starts back in the beginning yeah so d- to do that through lost in new york i was like damn it so then having to like fast forward to them i mean granted first world problem bullshit but i've always liked that thing where just like with every every other digital service out there they leave up like this is where you left off continue watching yeah first world problems you know yeah that's why i don't really complain <laughs> about it too much but hey like, like i said in between fight tv and independent wrestling tv if it's live or available really quick on one of those services, like, it's hard to beat that, especially with being an older fan. Like, we didn't have this five years ago or six years. Like, hey. when they tried the iPay-per-view shit, like, this is – we're in such a better situation, and I love it. Hey, can I complain real quick? First world problems, go ahead. These They're, they're going to have Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley fucking arm wrestle right now. Are you kidding me? Why shouldn't I just turn this off right now? Like, man, we don't have to go in depth, but come on. Are you kidding me right now? Two of the biggest guys are going to arm wrestle. I should turn this, turn this off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to derail. I, just could, I had to say something. I was hoping this it is, would be something on, on AIW, like, first world. <laughs> this is just trash. I got to turn this off. I'm getting distracted. <laughs> uh, I, I was recently reminded, though, of speaking AIW and that type of stuff. Um, do, you, do you buy DVDs, like actual physical media? That's the one thing I like about the Fight TV stuff. You have, like, a, you have it. But it's not like taking up space because I got I've been getting AIW DVDs, but DVDs are like going away, aren't they? Like, isn't that going to be a not a thing soon? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's an older media already. Uh, I I have some DVDs like new like stuff that I bought recently, but it's all like I think every DVD that I've bought in the last an AIW DVD, everything else that I've bought on like physical media has been a Blu-ray. Yeah. You know, I wish the AW did Blu-rays, but it's only, you know, it's only DVD. But I, it's pretty much just been buying stuff, shows that I've been going, you know, all the yeah. AW stuff I've been at. But I'm starting to compile, you know, a, quite a collection here. And I'm almost kind of thinking to myself, like, what am I going to do with all this shit, you know? But see, that's why I like the Fight TV digital shit. See, to me, this kind of goes in with Stacy's Super Fantastic. Like, I like having a collection of DVDs. 
or yeah. Blu-rays like that I, like, I can physically look at because I can just sit, see a whole collection. I don't know. It just it's it's somewhat satisfying. And yeah, I used to be the same way. I mean, with records, I just I'm starting to go away from it. Does that mean I'm getting older? I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> or it means you're running out of space. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Right. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. For me, like, there's. If it's like movies and stuff, there's certain movies that I want like a real like the Blu-ray of and I know I'm going to go back and watch it all the time. I think it's part of it is like the weirdo in me. What if that shit goes away? What if like the cloud disappears? You know, you got those movies. You can watch them. I couldn't, you know, that's one thing that I love about certain Blu-ray purchases where you can get like a Blu-ray and digital. So cloud goes away. I still got the Blu-ray. Yeah. Which when it comes down to it, that's what I love buying because. Again, first world problems where I don't want to get up out of my chair and put in the Blu-ray. I can just go to a Vudu app and boom, I can watch that same movie without opening it up. I'm real paranoid because I'm old and I've seen a bunch of shit come and go in my life. <laughs> Only place I'll buy, like I'll buy like the streams on Fight uh, for for wrestling, a movie and I'm not buying a physical copy, I'll only buy it off Apple because I know Apple wasn't fucking going anywhere. Yeah, that's and true. And they're going to honor my purchase. That's that's, true. that's why I still like movies anywhere because if I'm correct, it'll connect a lot of the purchases. So let's say I do buy it off Vudu or somewhere. Granted, it's not everywhere, but it has the potential to back up there too. I only say that because, like, ironically enough, I – listen to part of me on super fantastic recently and i mentioned how uh blood sport for some reason i bought it on apple tv it it backed up nowhere else like that was it and i still don't understand why hmm. first world problems right <laughs> i don't know movies movies anywhere is rad yeah but this is a movie podcast you know making movies aiw baby you know <laughs> For the brand. This is uh, Wrestling Cheers, and we got to talk about Little Guido's Beer Bash, and this this was a new venue, and what did you you guys think of Goldhorn Brewery? I was going to ask you, did you you drink any of the beer? You're not a big beer drinker, so what do you you thought about like the craft beer situation there? Do you have any of that? (laughs) No, I I am a beer drinker. I just don't drink beer like at bars a lot. Okay, you're not like you're not like a heavy boozer. You drink yeah. beers, but you're not like a heavy boozer. It's it's mainly because of my license. I just don't want to fuck that shit up. Um, right. Well, yeah, of course. Right. You got a CDL and shit. But so, did did you have any of the craft beer type? Did you hear any of that at all? I did not. But I I did. Yeah, it was all right. I had, I had their IPA. It was all right. I ended up drinking more just Maker's Mark than beer. But yeah, right. and you, uh, it was warm, but. Outside of the back room, the venue was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> about that neighborhood being silly. It was fine. Nothing happened. Everything was good. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your genius idea for where you were sitting, Stacy? Oh, yeah. I sat right in front of the big giant fan. It was great. Which nice. Was, which I had already, like, grabbed my seat. And then, like, you put two and two together. And that's which I was right in front of where you were sitting. And you're like, oh, I want to sit here because of the fan. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, good. Good idea. And like, oh, I, yeah. I feel like we didn't suffer as much. Like you still, it's, yeah. it's, you could still feel it, but it wasn't definitely because of the fan. It wasn't as bad. The fan made it better. Uh, eventually other people got hip to the fact that there was a giant industrial fan there mm-hmm. and just stood in front of it. Oh. So that cut, that cut the fan down a little bit. That's all right. Everybody, everybody, it's a community fan. Yeah. I wonder what, what <laughs> took them so long to come up with that idea to open the garage door? That's a good question. I figured it would be yeah. because of lighting, but it seemed to still work. Yeah, it worked. It seemed to work just fine. Oh, you mean like hard cam and like that bright light coming from that side or something? Mm-hmm. I mean, it would be uh, it would be coming from right behind it, but I don't know how much that mess yeah. with it. Yeah, I don't know. It, it definitely it was it was awesome once they opened that too. You know, I, I it was pretty good. I thought the temperature wasn't that bad. I'm wondering. I did not get a seat. I'm wondering how many people tried to just walk into the show that way because i swear i've seen at least one person try to do that and then be put like told like no like this is a show like you just can't like come in yeah dustin threw a guy out hammered hammered drunk guy tried sneaking in like three times and uh dustin i told him a couple times I was like, that was pretty much one of the best things i've seen all day <laughs> it was awesome 
he was not taking shit from this drunk guy. And, uh, yeah, it was awesome. I kind of called that, though. I'm like, man, we're at a brewery. Like, somebody's going to end up getting shit house and trying to wander in here. So here's my question. So say you went there to drink that night. You didn't go there to go to wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. You were just going to hang out in that front bar area. The only place to take a piss was inside where we were watching wrestling. That was the only ones? I never saw a different one, and every sign I said saw said restrooms, and then went back that way. Huh. Hmm. I mean, there was a decent crowd of people in the bar area that was not in the wrestling thing. I mean, there had to be another one somewhere. I, I, I mean, maybe, but I never saw it, unless it was a thing where it was like, you know, they just kept an eye on who didn't have wristbands. And- yeah. Yeah, yeah. This guy was clearly trying to sneak in, but yeah, that's a weird situation. I'll have to ask. Dustin or somebody next time I see him. There had to be. I feel like that's like a fire hazard type deal. Like, that can't be right, right? I I mean, I would think so. But like I said, I never saw other bathrooms. And like out in the bar, and to go like back that way to where like all the gimmick tables were. Hmm. The bathroom was that that one. Interesting. Huh. We're asking the real tough questions here on wrestling years. Was there <laughs> Where's another the piss bathroom? at? <laughs> But I think as a whole, like not even counting that, just like the feel of the venue was was nice. I I really liked. I mean, granted, you know that, that back room, the garage, whatever you want to call it, that kind of area, did get hot because of how many people are in there. But as a whole, um, I thought it was pretty cool, and it's definitely somewhere I want to go back to. Yeah, I like that place a lot. I was I thought I was I was really impressed. The little room is cool. Um, I thought it was a real intimate. I definitely get to go a little earlier so I can get a seat. Not sitting sucks. <laughs> oh man, and people lined up real early. Like we showed yeah. up. We showed up. I don't know, like a uh, hour and a half before doors were supposed to be, with the idea that like, oh, we could just like hang out and get a drink mm-hmm. or whatever. Then and there was already a line like all the way back to where like the tables were. And we're yeah. like, oh well, I guess I guess we're in line then. Yeah, yeah, that kind of bummed me out. But, you know, next time I guess I'll stand in line or something. I don't know. As far as what I know, the line normally starts at the bare minimum about two hours before the show. If not before that. Caden is normally one of the first to get in. So if he was here, he would tell us what time he he got there. I'm about to just pay Caden off next time. Be like, (laughs) you hold me one extra seat and then I'll just (laughs) take that seat wherever I may with it. That's why I always try to get there early. But granted, even with when we have like front row and, and GA, I still want to get there as early as possible. But I'm really picky on seats, and that's that's just me. At this point, I'm just going to request a, a seat because not having one sucks. <laughs> Take what I can get. All right, let's let's get into this show, and we we started off the night with Lee Moriarty versus Dominic Greeny. What do you guys think about this match? We've seen this Lee kid a couple times now. Um, I like him. He's good. Uh, I think we've said that many times. But him versus Dom was a good kind of uh, first. Was it? Wasn't his? Was his first singles? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I think we I, talked that's about that's a good first first singles, right? You know, that was a good match. I liked it. I think we talked about that on the preview that this was his first singles match. And I think right bef- in between the recording, the preview and this actual show, he was then announced for Jaylit. So that was like a, huh. a kind of a huge step in a short amount of time for Lee Moriarty and AIW. Yeah. It's a good guy to go against though. Dom's going to, Dom's going to give you a good match. Uh, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah. It was a good match to start the show with set mm-hmm. the tone. Speaking of Dom, do you want to talk about uh, the, the twins in the crowd? Or the doppelgangers. Um, oh man! So that was that was a thing at this show. Is there was a dude who looked exactly like Dom. Yes. There was another dude who looked like an old man version of Doctor Dan. Mm-hmm. I've never seen either of those people at AIW before. To the point where I asked Dom if he had a relative at the show, and he was like, "You're like the sixth person who said that to me." No, I didn't. They look so much alike. It's not and even candy. funny. And then there was, there was what, uh, the third star jobber looked like too. Yeah. But that one wasn't nearly as close as the other two. Like the other two looked like, like the dude who looked like Dom looked like Dom. The dude who looked like Dan in 30 years looked like Dan in 30 (laughs) years. (laughs) 
<laughs> the dude who looked like Brian was that kind of looked like. Yeah, I didn't see that guy. I was gonna say you should have told him to come stand by me. It would have felt a little more normal. <laughs> it was weird without TSJ there. God, he missed that show. You might miss Jaylit. Yeah, yeah. You know what can I? I got, I'm having a kid though. You know, oh, the, I'm it's obviously valid, understandable. Valid excuse. Yeah, yeah. And then like a jobber missed it because he because oh, the whole Jaylit not being on that weekend then made plans. Yeah, he's a big uh, he's a big race fan. He loves racing. Uh, considers himself a bit of a racist. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just just kidding, just kidding. No, he uh, he went. To, he's a motorsports guy. He went down. Uh, that was like the one of the biggest races of the year, I think, or something like that. South Carolina or something like that. He's got family there too, so it was a family trip. Plus, that got announced real late. You know, they announced the beer bash thing kind of late. He already he already had plans. So yeah, I thought I was gonna get a whole wrestling free. Memorial Day weekend, and then this got announced, and I was like, well, at least it's not three events in two days. I'm like, all right, this is not not as bad. Right, yeah, that was that was the thing. You could have hey, missed Jaylet. Hey, this, too. There were a lot of people there for a night when there was a pretty big pay-per-view on. Money in the bank? Yeah. <laughs> no, <Nah>, man. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. We're talking about uh, Impact Wrestling had something going on. <laughs> Not Triple A, dude. <laughs> um, the amount of the even bigger surprise for me were the amount of people with that company's logo on their shirts at this show while that company was having their first show on pay per view. Bang for your buck, man! AIW's twenty. That other one was like sixty or something. Fifty bucks to watch it on pay per view, or you can go watch a show live in front of you for twenty bucks yeah. at a brewery. Yeah, I know. I didn't pay fifty bucks for it. I'd rather did rather do the twenty. I hear you. And Dominic Greeny won via the heel hook. Yeah, we're we're back to cheering Dom again, right? I think that's I think that's what's up. He's, he's good boy Dom now. <laughs> I like it. Was it like him and Bishop just like did a double flip? That was uh yeah, I don't know. I didn't really, that was a good little that was a good good feud, man. That was good stuff. Yeah, that that's my favorite shit of this year so far, I think. That's part of why it was great. That was a that's a good match for, for Lee to get, you know. Dom Dom's got some heat, some some steam coming in, so that's a good match to get as your first kind of like singles, you know? Yeah, and Lee's really good. I mm-hmm. mean I've before he was getting all these AIW uh, spots, some other uh, local and regional uh, wrestling shows, and man, he he like stood out from the other people on those shows. Eventually, he would get an AIW chance, and he's man, he's making the best of it. It's real good. I'm glad for him. I think he's one of the most hardest working non AIW students right now, like in within this area. I would say that's a fair statement. And I don't even know how many years he's been wrestling, but I don't think it's that long. Again, yeah, I'm not another sure. Another reason to have Caden on because he could tell us. But definitely happy for him. And I think Dom is kind of a uh, measuring stick for a lot of the the newer talent coming into AIW. Yeah, he's kind of in that leadership role. I would agree. That's a good. So I said he's a good match for Lee. <laughs> Next up, we had the Weird World versus the Young Studs. This was a fun match, as far as I can remember. It's good to see, uh, good to see Weird World on a bar show with alcohol. Yes, I don't think I don't think uh, Worldwide was any type of sauce sabbatical or anything right now. So that was good. Let them get out there, go loose with the young studs, Eric Ryan, Bobby Beverly. Was there any weapons? I don't think I saw any weapons. Right? There wasn't. Was there any fuckery? Not that I remember. I was really hoping Kaplan would come out with Weird World, World again. Which sounds like a full time thing. It's gonna be like a uh oh, a special attraction kind of thing. <laughs> just when just when that music hits, we'll know that's that's what it is. The, <laughs> the unannounced special attraction. That's kind of what he is. What was the last Hey man, one? it works. Oh I, oh it definitely works. <laughs> it gets the pop every single fucking time. Who doesn't love Kaplan? America's champion. <laughs> This is the only other thing about doing a show like this, like a week later, is trying to remember a lot of the stuff about this particular show. Um, I know they did a couple, you know, 
Weird, weird World did a couple of their, their usual spots. Uh, mm-hmm. Terry Funk ladder spot. I think he did uh, something else where he put him up on his shoulders. Had that going. Um, I like I like Eric Ryan wearing the pants now. He used to wear those white shorts. Now he wears his uh, all white pants. I like those. Yeah. The, oh, me- the death match look going on. I like it. I remember something from this match that stood out for me. Uh, Weird Buddy did like the turtle thing, and Eric Ryan just kicked him in the face. Oof. Yes. That was great. Thanks. And uh, the Young Studs won via the Tiger Bomb. Is that the first time we've seen them since uh, since Mania, right, Nick? That was the first match since Mania? Uh, no, I couldn't Were be. They? Could it? Were they on uh, the Odeon show? I'm looking up the result because I, wa- I thought they were on Gauntlet for and the, the Gold. Huh. Hmm. They had the worst memory. Oh, yeah, they were on the – they were on the – that's right. They were on the Odeon show. Oh, damn. Yeah. Man. See, they start serving alcohol at shows and I forget all kinds of shit. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they teamed with Swoggle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no. My bad. And then out came the weird world of Kaplan. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now it's ringing a bell. Yeah, okay. So they got a bit of a thing going here. That makes more sense why they, you know, why them and Will, they're finishing up the business from that show. Uh, next up, we had one of my top three matches of the night Big Twan Tucker versus Faye Jackson. Good God. I literally shouldn't say anything about this except to just make people watch it. If you haven't seen this match, there should be a whole they should do a Patreon part where they just isolate Tuan's face for the entire match (laughs) and you should be able to watch the match in real time and in the corner you just see it like a a split screen (laughs) like picture in picture isolation of Tuan's face there you go Thorne making you money buddy do that idea and you'll get subscribers I would would pay for the next level up from where I'm at for that yeah (laughs) This uh, so Twan the, level, woke level. You get Twan videos. <laughs> <laughs> Match was the selling point of this show for me, and yeah, it's it's a funny concept. Like it's you know it's hey, but like the match delivered too. Like it was good. It was a good match. It was I laughed my ass off at Twan's fucking reactions to things. It was oh my, good. It was it was so good. Yeah, uh, it it delivered, and you should go out of your way to watch it. From beginning to end and even post match, it's just it was great the whole whole damn time. That's like I said, top three matches for me on this show. And much like Stacey, this was a big selling point for B two because just the whole we've known for a long time that Twan had a thing or has a thing for Faye Jackson and all this shit. Oh, and that the promo that she cut. Very simple, but perfect. So fucking perfect. Is there any more we could say on this match, or we just want to? I, yeah, I really think you got to direct people just to Smart Mark and, and buy this, uh, buy the digital or the DVD. It it is worth. There's a ton of other good shit that happens on this show, but this match is worth your money. Just just go buy the motherfucker right now. Indeed. And it was Big Tuan who won via a spear. He sure did. A brutal fucking spear. And the only thing that I'll spoil is after that. Fake kiss Twan. Oh man, the, the only thing you go spoil is just spoiling shit. You already what? The no, there's right. no. You, you edit this show. You need to take that out. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. Edit this. Hell no. The, <laughs> That's uh, that, You had to have known that was gonna happen. On the bu- Come on, leave some meat on the but. The next time there's some comic nerd <laughs> fucking movie, I'm gonna make sure I spoil part of it for you. Fuck off, man. <laughs> We're gonna say leave some meat on the bone. You, you? <laughs> yeah, you tried doing that, and I muted you for a day. Oh, what movie I'll, did you? I'll fucking text you. You can't mute my text, <laughs> motherfucker. Ooh, <laughs> I can hide I think, alert. I, just, I can hide I, alerts, but it's I can still see it. Think like, man, just leave. Don't. No, there's still. That. There's still meat. The only thing, the, the picture's out there. It's it's actually tweeted from Wrestling Cheers, and other people have tweeted it. But I'm I'm just saying that there's still. I've said it before. It's e- cool. E- EC3 told me spoilers only tell you half the story. That's only half the story. And there's still spots in that match that we're not touching on that are great, especially towards the end. And I'll leave it at that. And I and I firmly believe that I called 
on the preview show for this that everybody wins, and I fully believe I was right. Everybody won with this match. You were. Next up, we have Wes Barkley versus Matthew Justice, and it started off with, you know, Justice coming out, and then Wes's music hits. It's a pretty long intro before he comes out. Well, Bishop comes out, and Wes Barkley attacks him from behind. And this is another match. Was I'm not saying it as a complaint, but it, it's kind of what we expected. It was predictable, but it was Barkley getting his ass kicked for however long. Um, so I had to crack a piss off, like real bad. I couldn't wait, so I went out to the outside. And as I was coming back, uh, Wes was coming into the building. He had a chair, so I'm pretty sure he hit him with a chair. He didn't tackle yes. him. He hit him with a chair when he entered the ring. Well, I said attacked. So, oh, attack! I thought he said he tackled him. I was no. like, no, I think he hit him with a chair. That was pretty cool. Um, he's uh, yeah, that was that was a good match, man. Is that uh, Justice just gonna jump off? He's, he's been doing this for a while now, but he's just really up in the stakes here every time, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, it's great. This this feud on as long as they wanted to. I'm I'm good. You got my money. Like Matt just keeps finding fucking cool shit to jump off of. And shit to hurt people with. I legit wouldn't even hate if they did, if they found a mystery opponent for Justice and did Bishop West versus Justice in a mystery guy. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I wouldn't hate that either, you know? Keep this thing going. I'm cool with that, but who would it be? It's hard to say. I mean, you could maybe, maybe you bring somebody in, who knows, you know, for a one off thing, since it would only probably be a one off, you know, because. They don't tag, you know, the Wes and Bishop are both singles. They're not really tagging here. Well, um, they are in the Chandler Biggins tag team tournament, and they're, they are going as the Rip City Oh, shooters. I guess you're right. Yeah, they are tag. I guess that's true. I, I forgot about that, that they are kind of announced as a tag in IW now. It's a good point. But it would be it'd be cool to see. I don't know. I could see. I, would, I wouldn't hate that. Keep, like I said, keep this feud going, man. This is good stuff. Could that be a match for... Wrestle Rager. Yeah, definitely. Man, I would Death love Berkeley. If you, if you're doing that, you you have Justice have a guy like G Raver or somebody with oh, him oh, as his oh partner. My God. Oh, there you go. Full on death match versus Ripped City Shooters. My God. I think you just hit the nail on the head. That's perfect. Man, I was thinking along the lines originally more uh, ECW. Because that's kind of you know what he embodies, but you look at like some of the people that Matthew Justice went up against when he was champion. I mean, that's that's it. Yeah, that would be that'd be an interesting. This feud could go a lot of ways. I like it. This match was great, man. This was this was one of my favorite matches on the show. When I uh, it's beginning to be that way. When you hear Justice's Justice's music, man, you know it. You know something's good. Good is coming, man. It's pretty much. It's pretty much been uh, one of the best guys in AIW for a long time now. Doesn't have bad matches. That's what I was thinking. He's yeah. he's consistent. He's either going for a title, defending a title, or just being the most talked about spot or moment on the show. And we're not just saying that because he did a murder on him either. <laughs> <laughs> he did murder a guy, though. So, <laughs> so that, would, that would be cool. But anyway, uh, the... The official tweet that uh, Caden has here is he won via elbow drop from the rafters, which much like, not maybe not exactly like the Odeon spot, but it's it's out there. I've seen the video multiple times, so it was a cool it's spot. A, oh, yeah. Just another thing that got people talking again for just, you know, we, another week in a row. So there's that part of it, the consistency of it. People are just still, you know, keep talking about him. And I don't think this match was in my top three of the night, but I would put it four. I just like two uh, of the, two of the other matches a little bit more, but that's just me. In my top three for sure. Next up, we had another you know promo from Forty Acres, which is PB Smooth, Trey Lamar, and AJ Gray, and this led into a match of issuing an open challenge versus PME and Spider Nate Webb, unannounced for the show. But if you saw AIW's video that was released of uh, Little Guido starting the the beer bash. He was in in uh, in frame there, so it was really interesting to where he would he would poke his head. And this this was perfect. PME and fucking Spider Nate Webb is that 
like a, a trios team made in heaven. It's a party for sure. Oh yeah. I, could, I, I like walk. that. I like that a couple of people tried to get that one more time thing going with the intro and like, I, I love Nate Webb's intro. The weirdest thing's great. We don't ever need it two times ever again. I, I I like that everybody was adult enough to like shoot those handful of people down and be like, oh no 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 no. He's either got to do it three or four, or just because we already got two, so it's got right. got to do either three or four or one. And I feel like we've had had it two times twice. Oh really? I thought it was only that once. C- I don't know. They're um, they're all blurring together, but I swear there was like twice that, that it went. Mount that Carmel. Gauntlet, it felt like it might have been twice, but I don't think it was. Not Gauntlet. I'm talking like Mount Carmel bookings that he had. Because to go around that the way he did, it took like two two times. And he had the one where everybody went in the ring, including Fifth Star Jobber. <laughs> I forget what show that was. Was that was that a Jaylet? Or was that again, shows just blur together. But I swear that we had at least twice of two songs or two playthroughs. I'm not sure. Yeah, me either. But if, if Forty Acres is real good, though. Oh God, yeah. I like all three of these dudes are, are getting purpose. Like PB had a little bit there after after Twins. He got to become champion. That went the way it did. He's kind of mad about it. And you know, Trey hasn't been really much since Chase Oliver got injured. In fuck, AJ Gray's been up until recently. He was MIA since his match against Justice. So putting them together, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge fan of. I like Angry PB. Angry PB is way better than the PB we used to have. Yeah, I think it works as a whole, ultimately, for sure. Angry PB and also turned up AJ Gray and Trey Lamar of just telling the crowd, shut the fuck up, and all those bits. Like, there was, the, there was one dude in the crowd, I think this might have been one of the matches, and he was just, like, kept talking shit, but he ended up doing it in another match, too. I can't remember which one it was, but... I love seeing these three just about to rip off somebody's head. So, yeah, 40 Acres versus PME and Spider Nate Webb. It kind of, real quick, too, it kind of proves, too, that if you work hard in AIW, man, you'll get rewarded because, like, it's probably been said, but AJ was a guy who, you know, just kind of, like, worked the beer line and stuff, just came to shows a bunch, and then now look at it. He got on a show, show what he could do, been on shows, been on shows. Now he's got, like, I would say he's kind of the front man of that stable, you know? I thought it was more PB. Seems to me like AJ's kind of the man in charge of that. I don't know. They might say it's nobody. Yeah, you say either way. Yeah. I don't know. I like it. I like it a lot. I want to see more of it. So, 40 Acres won via Call to the Corner. Did um did either of you guys see Philly toss that beer and Papa Pepperoni catch it? Or Papa threw it and Philly catch it? Yes. That was incredible. It was a perfect fucking catch. It was Austin-esque. I hope you can see that on the camera because it was – that was like some brotherly type shit. I don't think two regular guys could have just did that. It was two brothers connecting on a fucking spiritual fucking toss. <laughs> I saw it. It was, it, was, it, it was incredible, dude. It was incredible. Any other thoughts on this match? No, nothing really. It was great. Oh, way over. Nate Webb's way over. 40 Acres is real good. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know that there's much else to say, man. Everybody in this is great. Mm-hmm. We got to see a little bit more of 40 Acres. An unannounced Spider-Nate Webb is still Spider-Nate Webb at the show. It's it's always fun. And PME is, is fucking PME. I think this is going to let PB kind of settle back into things a little bit. I think when he had the belt... It was all eyes on him singles, and I'm not going to say he was in over his head at all because I don't, I don't think that at all. But this will give him a chance to kind of ease back into shit as well, and kind of not have every single focus of the match be on him, and let him do to his strengths. I mean, dude's a big, he's a big, powerful dude. So I think this the stable thing would be really good for PB, to be honest from you, or to be honest with you. Excuse me. There's been a lot of man tag matches lately. I wonder if uh, maybe we see six man titles at AIW at some <laughs> point. You know, I wouldn't hate that. We lost the title. Oh, I don't think we're ever seeing the women's title come back, so I wouldn't nope. hate to see a six-man tag, you know? Busy. Weird World and Kaplan for that thing, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, we got teams for this thing, baby. The production, 40 Acres, right. the Weird World Kaplan. Right. right. Now, who would be the third man for uh, To Infinity Beyond to win it all? Uh, it's hard to say. I see Facade in a lot of scrambles. Maybe Facade. <laughs> 
No comment. <laughs> well, he he said he, he tweeted that he's the unadvertised scramble champion. Not, not me. he tweeted that. <laughs> that's a different belt. That's a, that's not the six man belt. That's you know six man six, six man scramble. Six no, way. Whatever. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And uh, I think right after this, we went to intermission. So we'll be right back after this commercial break. This is Ben. And this is Zach. We are uh, the hosts of Center Stage Podcast, uh, a podcast that I think you should listen to. It's fun. It's full of wrestling and movie talk and pop culture and us weirdos just going off about all of it. We go off the rails so often that this advertisement is about to go off the rails. We probably should have sat down and scripted it. I mean, scripting is for is for people that, you know, care about what it sounds like and if they sound like rational human beings. We're not those people. That's right. We could die tomorrow, but we're not that lucky. No, we are not. All right. So um, we are on iTunes. We are on Spotify. We're on Spreaker. We're on Google Play. So give us a listen. Um, continue to listen to Wrestling Cheers. Wrestling Cheers is fantastic and Justin is a great dude. But when you're done with that, when you want to fill the void in your life without you know the sadness that takes over your mind, heart, and soul, listen to Center Stage. Because we'll add to it. Yes, we will. We're, we're horrible human beings. But we love you. Love you long time. And speaking of uh, a scramble match, we came back from intermission with a scrambles match. And it was making his AIW debut, one called Manders versus Danhausen versus Cabana Man Dan versus TKD versus Logan Easton LaRue versus CPA and fucking Manders. Yeah. Yeah, that dude's back. Well, is making like their second appearance at AIW in the scramble. Yeah, yeah. a couple people. It's like they're, uh, like there was a bunch of people waiting for spots to open up in these kind of matches. <laughs> I wonder what happened. Yeah. A so, couple uh, people hurt. You know, a couple people who would have maybe been in this match. Ryder Reed's hurt. Yeah. Uh, uh, who else? Yeah. But yeah, that that Logan Easton LaRue, dude, he was, he was back. Uh, I didn't know if we would necessarily, out of, as far as the talent we saw, I didn't know maybe you'd see him again. But I like hating that guy. I could see myself hating that guy some more he was he was pretty good he was a good guy to, to not like <laughs> yeah we got cpa back again we got uh and dan yeah that dude's good this is uh well this is technically his third time then yes so because of the because of the mania little spot that kind of mm-hmm. kind of is his second one right yeah and he, he uh he makes that drive from alabama man that's holy shit yeah i was just about to mention that and he they drove, I think, straight back after the show. That's wild. Fucking brutal. Mm-hmm. So man, you're a you're a fan of Manders, right? Summers? I am I am too. Yeah. I like that dude. I so I, I think I do too, but I don't get his gimmick. Like it's like I'm a cowboy, but I'm Friday night lights, letterman's jacket. Like there's a lot going on there. He's from Iowa. Oh. Well Yeah, that's kind of their thing. Like, you know, like he, Friday night lights slash cowboy kinda of like that. To me, it kind of, yeah, kind of, I, I got it real quick. That's just kind of, he's a good old boy type, like. Actually, he's from either Maryland or Virginia, but went to college at Iowa, played for Iowa State, and I think that's where he's he currently still resides. Or, well, he's going to go back to living soon, but it's kind of where it all comes from. That's where he trained. It seemed like a, like a hodgepodge of shit going on with the dude, and I just didn't really understand the, he's good. I mm-hmm. just didn't. I didn't. Uh. I kind of get it. I don't know. It works for me. I like the. He just seems like a good. He's a nice guy. I don't know. I like the guy. He's a big yeah. ass dude. Uh, he throws throws it around. He's he's very quick. He's very athletic for a big ass dude. You can kind of look at a guy like that and go, huh? Maybe some bit of a, you know, mm-hmm. just kind of a slow moving hoss type gentleman. Nope. He moves it around. He, he gets it going. One of his nicknames is the Corn Belt Cowboy. Uh, yeah, I like it. But yeah, I like him. I just didn't. I didn't know if I, you know, this I, the gimmick just didn't. I don't. I don't know. Uh, Letterman's jacket just didn't all register with me correctly. I said that if you didn't come out to Old Town Road, it was the waste. But I still. <laughs> <like it. laughs> God. I mean, you got a hit on that, right? You know what I mean? You got a capital. You know. Yeah. That was, no uh, one's. No one's using it. You know, like. 
wearing fucking chaps and a cowboy hat. If anybody's coming out to that song, you're like, all right, I get it. I think, you know, like. I don't even remember what song he came out to. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think, I don't know. I don't remember. Out Old Town Road. <laughs> Maybe you, yeah, right. I would have fucking, you would have remembered. We would have <laughs> remembering what song had he come out to Old Town Road. You're right about that. I'll give credit to Caden when this, ma- uh, before the match actually even started. He called that there would be some sort of big move between Cabana Man Dan and Manders. And he fucking called it. Yeah. And those flip flops sound so fucking brutal. It sounded good in that room, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And shit. Yeah. Is he in for Jayla? Is he on the Jayla list? Cabana Man Dan? No. No. He Man. is not. I thought he m- maybe could have been in, like, the tag tournament, given a tag team partner, but. I know he's not on there either. Ah, uh, that tag tournament looks like it's all real tag teams, though. Yeah. I mean, he does have a tag partner that's announced for Jaylet, but they just didn't put him in there, which is fine. <laughs> Definitely, I'd love to see more uh, Cabana Man Dan and Manders in AIW. I should say, everybody here in this match I'd like to see more of, but Dan Housen is pretty much a mainstay in AIW, and, you know, TKD is an AIW student. But the other four are good in AIW. I feel Dan like you're going to see Manders. I feel like he's on the radar of AIW for sure. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Stacey. That's cool. Yeah, I think say? we're going to see that guy for sure. What were you going to say, Stacey? Uh, <clears throat> Dan Housen, A, had a busy night. He's He was out there for this, and then he's back out there. Back out there another for, the, match. for the six-man tag match. Yeah. LOL. But we'll get to that later. Also, <laughs> is just above everybody else's, like... It's like everything clicked for that dude this year. Like his video promos and the vignettes he makes are great. The merch is real good. That new pin that he's got, fucking awesome. New shirt, fucking awesome. The masks, amazing. Like, man. It typically bothers me when guys talk in third person, but he's one of the few characters slash like personalities that I'm like, you have to, you have to do it because it works so good that he's doing it now. He said something about like, Dan Housen made a child cry and it's not even the first match or something like that. And I was like, God <laughs> damn it. That's funny. You know what I mean? Like scary, scary mask, you know, paint face paint guy made a child cry. Like that fucking works. The picture of him with that goat, like the breweries <laughs> mascot goat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so good. Yeah. I think it, it kind of fixes something that I heard somebody complain about Dan Housen. And it wasn't someone within wrestling. It was actually someone who, uh, does like social media marketing and they were talking on a podcast and they mentioned a scary wrestlers pin tweet about getting engaged and how like that went against the character. And immediately I went, Oh, you're, you, you're talking about Dan house and there's nobody else you could be talking about. I think this adds to the, the Twitter personality for him where it's not just, I don't tweet. I mean, I don't, I don't care. He did that, but it's almost like a good fuck you to the person that said that. Well, yeah, I don't know, man. I, that's the weirdest comment ever. I, a, a fucking spooky evil dude can't get married? Like, I don't know. I have watched a lot of spooky evil shit, and there are plenty of, you know, like, oh, this is my fucking bride shit. Like, it, I don't get that. Whatever. Yeah, what the fuck? Ain't he ever seen the Adams Family? Married. Munsters? <laughs> married. Like, what the fuck? Just because he's down with the fucking dark, dark forces, he can't get fucking holy matrimony? It's fucked up. I don't yeah. know, but <laughs> I loved Dan Housen, so to me it was it was a shot because they didn't mention who, but who other what other like spooky wrestlers are out there like that? So it's whatever. It, even if he wasn't tweeting like that, it's, his character always fucking works. And I think we, we we've done a lot of love for Dan Housen lately. I think we that's we talked about his merch last week, correct? Yeah, I'll keep talking about yeah. it because it's good. Mm-hmm. Everybody else should take a look at what that dude's putting on his gimmick table and take fucking notes because it's good. Well, he's also just kind of continued to evolve from the time that we've saw him in AIW, which is good because it's not really gotten stale. He started out as kind of the spooky writer guy. They had those vignettes of him typing stuff and kind of real dry and f- to the point, like not a lot of talking, not a lot of dialogue. And it's progressing to the point where now he's just like talking in third person and shit and putting you know, videos of him with his face and then this spirally black and white, like hypnotizer type shit. Like it's evolved. It hasn't just been spooky, spooky in the basement guy he paints his face. You know, he, he keeps kind of changing slash progressing slash evolving it. And it's, it's good. 
you get just enough information to be intrigued and want to know more, but not enough to know anything. Right. I've said it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's the thing that I love about Dan Housen. He's a dude that took the ball and ran with it. He was not an original member of the production, uh, was a replacement, a fill in, someone who was not supposed to be a part of AIW. If Colby Red didn't leave wrestling, but who? <laughs> oh. Talking about there's the the whole time the production's been there. It's been Dan Housen. He's he's been there. No, I'm not. I'm not playing that. We're not. I'm not playing that game. There, we all know that there was somebody else different. And now you say uh-huh. we all. You say we all know. I, this ain't ringing a bell for me. I'm not. I'm not sure you're talking about. It. I don't even it, know. Dan it Housen. is an insult to Dan Housen to compare him to Colby Red. Who? I just don't know who this Colby Red character is. That's fine, but. Dan Housen, way better than Colby Red, and has killed it He's every a, step of the way. I have vague memories of some mime, but I don't, I don't know who's <laughs> Juggalo you're talking about. Mime? Juggalo. He was a Juggalo. Hey, you're down with the clown. Well, that, that's, why, that's why I'm the one who remembers him. That's why. Fair enough. I mean, we shared a Fago together. Come on. But <laughs> the whole point is Dan Housen has just – Got like we said, better and better, and there's nothing. There's it's hard to compliment even him even more than we already have, and go buy Dan Housen merch. Yeah, it's all good, all of it. It's great. And if you don't like what he has out, give him a little bit, and he'll come out with something new, and it's always great. Next, well, it was uh, Manders won the uh, running power slam to Cabana Man Dan. That power slam looked fucking brutal too. Mm-hmm. Next up, we had one of my other top three matches of the night. Zach Thomas versus Joshua Bishop for the AIW Intense Championship. Brutal. Want to start it off, Stair Stacy? I feel like I talk first every time. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's brutal as fuck. And nobody's favorite wrestler, Zach Thomas, <laughs> versus Josh Bishop. Dude, so I stood next to him a little while, too. Matt, I'm pretty sure his name's Matt. Yeah. Um... And he brought up how he said that. And he was like, man, and I was like kind of kidding, too. Like I was just busting balls, but I, I was kidding. But, I, you know, I was busting ball. And like, man, he got really fucking mad, didn't he? And I was like, well, you know, you kind of insulted the fucking <laughs> shit out of him. Like, yeah, he did get kind of mad. But, um, I mean, that's not even true to say. Like fucking Zach uh, is killing it. Like dude sells shirts. I see people wearing his shirts. You know what I mean? Like people are that – People are rooting for that guy. He's fucking good, man. Yeah, Pam has a Zach Thomas shirt. There you go. Case in point. Somebody's got, you know. If if somehow that statement had been true before this match, shit ain't true no more. Yeah, right, because he definitely showed out. Fuck yeah. And then you want to point out the introduction that we missed, Stacy, that you threw out later. It's like, oh, that would have been hilarious. Fresh my memory, man. Um, the nickname for you could have used for Bishop and adding that little bit we just talked about for Zach Thomas. Man, I'm 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 drawing a complete blank. <laughs> that, that Zach Thomas should have been announced as nobody's favorite wrestler, like we mentioned, and then Joshua Bishop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. should have been announced as everybody's new favorite wrestler. No, because he's one of mine, man. That dude fucking rules. Man, tons of marijuana. You got to remind me. Of what <laughs> <laughs> like, I think you said Mr. Hot Dog and a handshake. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I did say that. Yeah, you pointed that out like not that long after introduction. We were like, damn, that would have been good. Yeah, he's not Mr. Yeah. Up for anything anymore. Now he's Mr. Hot Dog and a handshake. Yeah, Mr. Mr. $20 envelope, Josh Bishop. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, man. Josh, Josh rules, man. Does. I, I I already ranted about that shit. I ain't gonna do it. I just mean this match too. Like just in general now, um, he's just become he's quickly become one of my favorite guys. Prior, to, you know, not even just that spot that we know that everyone knows we're talking about with the Justice thing, but he's he's done this thing. I think it was maybe a little before Mania when he just started doing this really maniacal like laugh, like breathing, like look that he gives with his eyes real wide open and his mouth kind of wide open. And it just looks like. He's legitimately going to murder someone. <laughs> I, I love it. I really love it. It's so good. He's a bad man. He is. He's having. I mean, I've said it before. I'm a broken fucking record, man. He's having like the best year in fucking independent wrestling. It's amazing. Yeah, I would agree. 
and every match is good. Name me the last bad match that kid had. I can't think of it. Nope. No. <clears throat> He's also had two great feuds in a row. No, three. Yeah. I'll throw the J Pro in there one three. too. Yeah. Fucking Yeah, because look at now what J Pro's on doing a bit of a run himself here now, you know? You could almost you could argue that Mr. Bishop helped start that little run that you know not, <laughs> if you want to be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're going back essentially a full calendar year. If you do those three, that's been the last year for Bishop. Mm-hmm. Has been J Pro and then Dom and now Justice. And there hasn't been a bad anything out of all of that. There's not a lot of people who can say that. Yeah. Very true. And it was Joshua Bishop retaining via powerbomb through a door, which this was the match that seen the doors come out. I, I like, like the doors, doors, man. Yeah, I agree. I don't hate it. You know what they do? They break every time, unlike tables. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Or Well, it's either they break too soon or they don't break at all. Next up, uh, we have the match that we have to get into. Derek Director and Eddie Only versus Little Guido and Tracy Smothers. And I'm just, I might get to the finish. The, the production won via a roll-up. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there was a six-man tag match because... Steve Guy accidentally announced it as one, and Dan Housen was like, no, I'm not fucking wrestling again. This is a tag team match. I mean, at that point, was, like, the whole Smothers clan and Guido already out there? Mm, no. Uh, production came out first. I was gonna say, because there were definitely enough people for a, a six-man match. Yeah, there was. Yeah, and the lady had, her, had gear on, too, so you, you know. And, I am not do the only thing that we can talk about this match is the elephant in the room because it killed this match. It went from this is fun to all right, this needs to end now. It's 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 bad. <sighs> yeah, you can't say that word in AIW. For those who say that word anywhere, here. obviously, but we, it's it's been precedented that you can't say it doesn't fly around. But obviously, you should you know, like I said, it shouldn't fly anywhere. I don't know why it needs to be said, but. There has been recent precedent that you can't really... We're not big fans of that word. Mm -hmm. Um, For those who don't know, because I don't know how many people listen to this that weren't at the show. Basically, we have the normal spot between Eddie and Derek, where I think it was Derek was on his knees hugging Eddie through the ropes. The way around. Was the other? Okay. So Eddie uh, hugging Derek through the ropes. Seen it a million times. And Tracy points at him. If you're offended by using this word, I'm going to use it just for context. Oh, don't why, use it. Yeah, no, why no, bother? No, just say hey, he, no, no, knows what you're no, no, saying. No, no. Just say he made a, a comment that wasn't great. We should just move on from there. Yeah, man. At least like be like rhymes with don't say the fucking word. There's no reason. It's not going to get you anywhere. Whatever. The whole I would just be using it in context of. Fucking word. <laughs> I'm just using it in quote, not of well, the way he was fucking using it. Yeah, there's a clear difference. It's just not going to. Everyone knows. So look, man, about. Tracy Smothers tried to get a chant going that rhymes with maggots. Figure it out. Yeah, and it did. The crowd went. was not having it, obviously. No. We started a 2019 chant, in fact. And it. Yeah, from that moment on, it was just. Most of us, I could at least speak for me and Tra- uh, Stacy because we were in the, the same vicinity. Like, we wanted it over. Just hurry up and finish the match. This is, we're done. Man, I'll say this. Uh, uh, it only felt the air get sucked out of a room in that way. And it was when Flip Kendrick got hurt. Oh, yeah. Ugh. But like, the there was like a a notable difference in the crowd after it happened. And like, is old i get it he's cte to fuck um i he, ah, man you just you can't say it and like that he tried to get a chant started at whatever it's 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 it was dumb it was a bonehead move but then like so like the match went on for a while afterwards and credit to those guys because nobody else in this match did anything wrong i felt bad for guido i felt bad for Derek and eddie and like they tried, like they had the drinking contest thing during it, and like did a bunch of stuff that I, you know, good, it, and it was good, but the crowd was just out of it at that point. And um, man, then Tracy just like got a microphone, and I think he was trying to like make up for it, but just kept digging the hole. And it's like, man, just just go, just go, just be done, go, 
like and to save this. There was also the, salvage. There was also the spot from uh, Tracy Smothers' daughter. I oh think. no, I forgot about that. <laughs> I don't even know what it was because I was just kind of checked out at that. Like I said, I didn't have a seat. And I was standing in the back. So I think I was just probably standing around drinking a beer. Or no, couldn't even tell uh, you what's happened at the end of this match or whatever. She biffed some kind of, I forget if it was like a, I ever like a two pace to a seat. It was something through the ropes and she biffed it. Like Ouch. almost like she hit the, the middle rope and like that helped like nose dive her. Basically, the only way I can describe yeah. it. It, ouch, it was ugly, but easily no offense to everybody in this match, but Tracy is probably just the, the killer, the worst match of the night because it, it killed this part of the show. Yeah, and man, I don't, and I don't know that Tracy Smothers is like, I don't, I'm not taking this as like he's, he hates gay people. I just think understand and there's not an excuse for not understanding but i think he doesn't understand that that because like if you rewind to the heyday of tracy smothers and i'm not talking about like that heyday isn't like the fucking 70s like in the 90s in ecw that flew and it doesn't now and it shouldn't have then but it did yeah i don't don't really care i don't care for tracy smothers to be honest with you if i i didn't have to see him wrestle anymore i wouldn't be like mad because i just don't care it's like uh, worldwide said he gets a pass he's like the only guy who gets a pass but i just it is what it is it's tracy and and i'm not trying to get the guy canceled i don't care he just kind of bores me i don't i'm i just don't care against the right opponent i love tracy like he's had some funny matches in aiw him versus cole cabana is is fantastic it's great him versus swoggle was good yeah um FBI versus the Carnies was good, mainly because Tracy's mother's entrance to freaking Chicago Cub shit. Great. But I've always defended him, like, well, I know, with the the Confederate flag shit. So I'm like, ah, you know, that's a Southern thing, whatever. Like, I can look over. I can look past that. But you say that in the ring, I go, uh, like, you're on your own there, bud. Like, if we don't see him ever again in AIW, I'm not going to cry. And that, yeah, I'm just... Listen, it's heavy pizza deliverance for the rest of the next couple months, so I don't don't have your hopes up if you plan on see, wanting to see him. Jay Welf, I'm looking at you. Big fan. Jay Welf's a big fan, Tracy. Yeah, but when was the last time he came to an AIW show? You weren't there. Mania weekend. Oh, okay, yeah. When was the last time he came to an AIW show in Northeast Ohio? They are coming, um, not too long. It wasn't that long ago. Rager? But they, he, he's coming back. Yeah, Rager, right? Yep. I haven't got to talk about it. I'm like a fan of wealth. I love like being by wealth at that show at uh, Rager. Oh, I love it. Like he's great. I love him. King of the punks, dude. King of the parking lot. Okay. wealth. So let's uh, move on to a match that kind of helped b- bring the vibe back up. Uh, we had the annual student debut match. We had Chuck Stone versus Arthur MacArthur, Eric Taylor, and... Mikey Montgomery. Dude, students fucking killed it, man. This was my other top three match, and I think coming after that match that just drained everybody like this, this was fun. And I think there there was a lot riding on, on these four. They've you know, they've debuted elsewhere, but to get that official debut in AIW is means something and they I think they killed it. Definitely. I, I offer one criticism. Uh, what's the kid's name? Chuck Stone? Oh, yeah. don't, don't make fun of my favorite wrestler. Outfit? Like, a cheeseburger already exists. So there's that. But aside from that, just young. It's his first gimmick. Look around AIW. You cannot say I am the fattest man in this room. <laughs> because it, the shit don't fly. I'm in that room. <laughs> All right, yeah, I guess not, if somebody's going to take not even the, with that. Yeah. You're not even the fattest fucking wrestler that has wrestled in AIW. <laughs> There's, like, <laughs> Mo and Dick Justice. And, like, come on, man, new gimmick. Figure it out. You, you, he was good in ring, but Is that on him, though? Because I think they – don't they give him their gimmick? That Maybe. That technically not really on him? I don't, I don't know. All the other guys made their shit work. Like, Mikey – Mikey's gear Mikey's matches good, his, man. Yeah. Mikey is a good that kid. He 
I, I'm biased, I know, because that's our boy, Pod Van Dam, is a big fan of Mikey the Millennial. Do. But he, Mikey's good, man. And that kid, like, everything in the match was fine, and I was thoroughly entertained. But, like, it's just those little things where, like, man, that's just, like, it's not, like, man. But they they killed it in ring, but, like, that's just a bad, like, like, cause, and I get the thing with, like, I'm the strongest man. Oh, I'm the fattest man. But, yeah, like, I can, there are, like, people in this room. But, um, <laughs> Uh, my I don't think Arthur MacArthur or Chuck MacArthur. What is his name? Arthur MacArthur. Arthur MacArthur. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he's saying he's the strongest man in the room. I think he's saying he's the strong man, which I kind of he's he's kind of making his gimmick work with the oh, like he's really playing it up with the, something like that. You got to really fucking to the tease with with that shit, and he's mm-hmm. he's doing it pretty good for his early, you know, just debut. You know, he's really got to keep this pedal to the metal with that kind of stuff, but. I like I liked it. I don't know. It was it was good. Yeah, no, he you know the thing with that is like he he owns it though, you know? Yeah. Yes. I would it agree. Completely buys into the gimmick. Yeah. But it, that's what it it's worked. Works. Yeah. One of my biggest critiques is I feel like Mikey and Eric are so close to being the same damn thing. Mikey has the benefit of I've known who he is longer and Eric is just a guy who I think I found out about recently, like right before the show. And to me, like when they were both in the ring at the same time, I just thought of that Spider-Man meme where it's two Spider-Mans just pointing at each other. Um, I just don't really know what Eric's, what is his gimmick? What, what, what is he, what is, what does he do? What is his thing? Is he a cool guy? It's like with Mikey's, we kind of know he's like a millennial, you know, he's scooting and shit. He's got like an aloof kind of attitude. Yeah. Like he's the millennial you know, like version of Eric. Ass. Yeah, like, I kind of get his thing. But Eric, I guess I'm not really sure on it yet. Uh, like, Ma- his Twitter handle's at Malibu ET, so is he's going for this Malibu vibe? Okay, just kind of like a cool guy? Basically. Cool guy. All right, all right. Uh, expound upon that a little more for me. If, if he's he, had a, he had a fan base. I mean, it was no Barkley Nation, but there were, there were some people there that were... And that's good, because it helped his in-ring. I would definitely say that he had the confidence, and, you know... and. He he wrestled. He was good in ring. It's just that his gimmick was I wasn't absolutely sure what it was or, you know, what I mean, per se. I felt like Eric was the Wes Barkley, Joshua Bishop of this class. But Mikey was the one that had a, I think, more of a genuine fan base within AIW. Like, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, uh, we've all watched Mikey. Like, so I've seen mikey at the shows hustle his fucking ass off on ring crew mm-hmm. and people right. were not and like he's I, man yeah I, I think mikey had already earned before he wrestled that match fans of people that go to aiw shows based on him just being around and yeah i mean he kind of he kind of like he when he was on ring crew or like cleaning up streamers, when he first came around, he hustled and busted ass so much that we almost thought it was a joke. But they yeah. were like, no, this is just this kid's fucking shit. Like he just is all over it. And we, everyone kind of loved him from there on out. Hey, hold on. We've all omitted something and it's a goddamn shame that we've done this. How about Zay making his fucking debut oh. as a referee? Yep. Yeah. He did a great job as well. Um, and uh, that kid's really kind of coming into his own. He seemed like a really shy, kind of like outspoken dude. And uh, he, he's, he's uh, yeah, for sure. That dude killed it. You see that video of him doing friggin' dance in Old Town Road at Colossal Con? No, I, I did not. Oh, bro, you got to go to Derek Director's friggin' Twitter, man. It's awesome. <laughs> he comes into the, you know, everyone cosplays for Colossal Con and shit. He ca- he comes comes into the ring with a cowboy hat and shit to that song and friggin' throws down dancing and it was incredible. I'm actually shocked that has not gone viral yet. Shocked to be honest. Yeah, man, and I I feel bad. I you know what I I shouldn't have shit on that kid so much, but because he was good, like he was good in ring. It was just that like one thing, just that one statement where I was like, ah, man, just don't do that. Like a planned part of like his regular shit. Like, what what? Who are you talking about, Eric? T- Eric Taylor. Uh, the, uh, Chuck, the Chuck, Chuck yeah, Stone. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, everything Eric did was fine. I was gonna say I didn't remember anything specifically. I thought he did pretty good. No. Yeah, no, he did. They all did. They all were good. 
Yeah. Just that one piece was like, ah, oh, man, really? <laughs> yeah, because I think I remember when like he came out and said that, you were just like, man, you're not even the fattest guy in this room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real easy for people to make, like, you know, hamburger jokes. And us two is robble robble. And it was uh, Mikey Montgomery wins via Phoenix Splash. That's a fucking great move, too. Great finish. It's shit that I didn't know he was capable of doing. Like, we've seen him wrestle at UXWA. And, mm-hmm. man, yeah, he, he pulled out all the shit for this one. This is good. Yeah, he, he kept that in the pocket. They didn't finish like that at UXWA. <laughs> Hopefully we see more... Of these students, day two of uh, J Lit, because with the new structure and everything, there's going to be some filler matches, one way or another. A spot during the biggins for him. Yeah, that too, because that's that's regularly where this match would normally happen. Well, the because... debut at the right on the right day, just not the right show. Yeah. So hopefully, like I said, we see more of them sometime above like J Lit. And then next up, we had the main event of the evening, Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham versus Joey Ryan. My apologies for not getting uh, toilet paper ready. Everybody forgot. Dude. Bad. What was that? I said, I felt so bad. Just Why? remembered toilet paper. Oh, because we didn't throw it at him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a funny statement, right? I had a lot of no pun intended shit going on in my life this that particular oh. week, and I d- I didn't get to get it together or just put out a tweet. Hey, can some people grab some toilet paper for Doctor Dan's match? And he ended up fucking main eventing, which it would have been great, man. And that's like the first time we haven't had toilet paper for Dan in a long time. Uh, I'm remembering a show because he did the whole thing like he was re- waiting for it and he was laughing at it. Might have been at was it Akron? No, I don't know. There, there was one within the past six months. I, I thought there was one, but I, I could be wrong. See, man, at Mount Carmel, there was the dollar store right around the corner. So even if you forgot, you could just oh, give yeah. somebody money and have them run up and grab toilet paper. Same with Akron. Yeah, Akron yeah, you could just go. Akron has that plaza and it has a, I think it's a Dollar Tree. So yeah, that, that's one thing I, I kind of miss about Mount Carmel. Yeah, but Joey Ryan makes his AIW debut. <laughs> yeah, he did. And a lot of people, a lot of people like that guy. I was happy he got to have a match in AIW. I didn't get a picture with him or anything. I meant to get an autograph on a card, but I never got around to it. But I mean, he, how many people you think came just for Joey Ryan? En- enough. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely a bunch. I think it, I think it helped bring in people like, you know, we talked earlier about how this was the same night as that AEW pay-per-view did a lot to bring the people I saw wearing AEW shirts and hoodies and stuff it was probably the draw for a lot of those people. Definitely. And I mean, this match had your normal Joey Ryan stuff, but I think what surprised most of us, Dr. Dan won the uh, positive affirmation. Uh, fermina- uh, fuck, I can't say it. Uh, affirmation? Affirmation. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't surprise me at all. Dr. Dan's my boy. I knew he was going to win. That's what I'm most happy about in this match, to be honest. Um, I I don't hate Joey Ryan because I don't really care. You know, I don't obviously care enough to hate him, but it's not really my thing. I don't really. It's been said that I, I didn't really care that he was coming. I don't, whatever. The dick flip thing is funny, but I'm, I don't know. Whatever. Didn't really care. Um, but I was really glad for Dr. Dan, man. Main event. You know, you got a lot of, you know, dude's been working hard. He puts a lot into AIW. It was, it was good to see him get a moment, man. Um, I liked it. Now, for that. Is, is it that you knew he was going to win or you wanted Hell him to yeah. win? But here's the I, he was Dr. Dan's going to win every match he's in, dude. Dedication, confidence, <laughs> respect. What was the last singles uh, win he had? Listen, I don't know. I'm not going to get semantics here, all right? We're just talking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I talked with him after the show. He told me it was like some insane fucking time like the last time he had a singles win okay so i think well. that that's what surprised me because it's oh dr dan you know he loses these matches fine so when he won i was like oh shit in getting that win against joey ryan he did the the paper cut spot with joey ryan yeah he, he had how many pamphlets in his tights <laughs> i think he had he um, had more more pamphlets than joey had blow pops <laughs> oh my god 
And there were a lot of people clamoring for them fucking blow pops too, man. <laughs> one of us, one of them was right by us. Yeah, man. She didn't. She didn't get one though. And then, like at the end of the night, she was like, "Yeah, I'm like I'm good." I, I, Joey Ryan's gimmick makes me laugh. It's you know, it's the same couple spots every show. It's you know, it's sort of like Orange Cassidy, right? Like, well, yeah, you're well, gonna I see got- when you. I kind of was like, I whined for a second. I didn't whine, whatever. But I was like, yeah, I was over it. And I was like, well, why? And I was like, well, it's just the same thing. I don't get it. I don't like it. It's not my thing. And then everyone kind of said, well, isn't that kind of wrestling? Like, that's kind of a gimmick, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, you're right. I mean, it is. It's just, I don't know. I don't love it. I don't know. Whatever, though. As far as what I'm seeing, and this, is, ironically enough, this is the match that uh, Joey Ryan and Dr. Dan reminded me of. And it was his last win that I'm looking now on uh, – cagematch.net of what they're reporting the last singles aiw win was versus jake manning at aiw season of the witch holy shit fuck and long damn time ago mm-hmm. but in his defense he hasn't been in as many singles matches he's been in a lot of scramble matches or a lot of tag team matches like uh versus uh well they won versus crime time him and Brian Carson, but then they lost versus the Headhunters. And then the next show, he was uh, walked the plank. He was in a scramble match. Then lost in a tag team match. And it's mostly what it is, scramble matches or tag team matches. Or losing to AJ Gray. Good match. If you like comedy wrestling, this match super fucking delivered. It's one of the things I like about Dr. Dan, he can play the comedy role, but he doesn't always. No, he's a good wrestler. Mm-hmm. Any more to say about this match? I mean, that's... I think that's pretty much the gist of it all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was there was thing that you would expect to have in a Dr. Dan match. Everything you would expect to have in a Joey Ryan match was all there. Either of those two dudes, you need to watch this match. All right. Any uh, final thoughts on this show? No. Glad I was there. Glad I didn't miss out. Uh, hopefully I'll be at Jaylet. Maybe I won't, though. Who knows? We'll see. Real life may call. How about you, Stacey? Uh, it was a good show. Uh, I like this place as another option shows. Uh, I like that for the after party, you just walk back <clears throat> walk back to the front bar, and you're <laughs> at the yeah. after party. See that dog they had there? That lady had a dog. That dog ruled, but I was like, people get weird about like if you like try to pet their dogs or anything, so I, I left it alone. But man, dog was huge. He was cool, man. He kept looking at me through that glass like he really wanted me to buy and get He was chilling on that one couch for a long time, like in the bar. I was hoping he was going to come to the wrestling show. (laughs) Any uh, final thoughts or last-minute plugs before we go? Start with Pat. Uh, Nothing. You can listen to me every Sunday. Uh, Sunday evening, the uh, new episodes of Pod Van Dam. Follow us on Twitter at Pod Van Dam or my personal account. Ed tweets from Pod Van Dam. I tweet from at You Can Call Me Ron. How about you, Stacey? Super fantastic podcast actually has a new episode finally. Uh, yeah, with Ed from Pod Van Dam. So you know where you listen to your podcasts at uh, Google and Spotify, all those places, uh, and uh, Instagram at Super Fantastic Podcast, and on Twitter at Super Fantastic. And uh, there'll be a bunch of episodes coming up in June. Back to actually, you know cast and not taking two and a half months off and i would suggest everybody to listen to both this week's pod van dam and not technically last week's super fantastic the the in getting inside the mind of ed is special and it's it's fun because there's never a dull moment yeah he's he's a he's a real gem that guy need to get him back on here soon i learned a lot about chris chan chris three and, of course, you can find myself at Heavyset330, much like you can find this show at Wrestling Cheers. Facebook.com slash Wrestling Cheers, Twitter.com slash Wrestling Cheers, and Instagram.com slash Wrestling Cheers. Email, if you so choose to desire, Wrestling Cheers at gmail.com. Still have the merch store over at watermaneuver.net. Once again, please rate, review, and subscribe to wherever you listen to this fine podcast, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or Podbean, WrestlingCheers.podbean. Dot com. Check out our friends on the Trending Topics Network, such as All Beer Inside, Eurovision Showcase, Old School at the Movies, and Wrestling with Altitude. Check out our other podcasting friends, such as Pod Van Dam, Super Fantastic Podcast, Road Home from Wrestling, Kick Out of Two, The Indie Cast, 
Center Stage, So Bros Network, UXWA Today, Big Gold Belt Podcast, The Co-Host Wrestling Show, Spotlight Series, and I Got Your Five Stars. Check out our other non-podcasting friends, such as Thrift Store Jobber, The Savage Dash, Set Tab Photo, Powerslam.tv, use wrestling chairs all one word and get your first month free, Ringside Shots Photography, Sickening Pictures, Wrestle Void, Key on Sports, and, well, no, Stay Tough, Midwest Territory, and the official graphic designer of Wrestling Cheers, Moy Boy Designs. That will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, even if you are Tracy Smothers. Later. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Would you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And there are all these that you came. You're the way you can say, rules are all the same. Yeah. 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 Y